Hello friends, my name is James Owen Brown. Welcome back to another action-packed episode of Me and the Boys Wrestling. DNA. If it's in you, it should be on you. Holden Rhodes Coffee. Always fresh, never tired. Coffee with personality. Check out www. Dot Holden Roads Coffee dot com. It's been a little bit since we've talked. We had that uh, mixed tag tournament that went over really well. The most viewed house show that uh, we've ever done here. As well as another stacked card of Pop Culture Punch Out. If you're not watching Pop Culture Punch Out, uh, you should be. To be there's things happening over there that are affecting the continuity of me and the boys wrestling here's an example live on the episode of pop culture punch out dmp and the hellfire club made a blockbuster acquisition garnering the talents of one oscar to bolster his lineup on the ladies side of things some of the teams have two ladies Holden Rhodes got the ball rolling by by making that deal to acquire Rogue from the X-Men. Itami's team was dealt Spider Gwen as a like a compensation. And uh, since then, hmm, I don't know, kind of in the mix. Had a big week of points. Let's fire this up so we can look at the points. And uh, then we'll keep talking. Where did it go? Firing it up now, future James. Oh wow, so loud. Obviously it's too loud, so we gotta do something with that. Here are the total up-to-date points. Out of nowhere, Team Holden on a huge pop culture punch out takes the lead 54 points. The Hellfire Club 49, New Age Militia drops to third with 48, Team 420 46, Dangerous Goods 39, the Lollipop Guild 33. But not so far out of it, you know? What we've got now, friends, we have a vacant cash in the satchel, me and the boys bank case. So we're going to rectify that situation right here. 30 man rumble. Now, I believe that almost everybody is in this. Uh, unless you are Cody Harris, who's the champ. You know, you know we're not going to see the champ out here, you know, all the time. Right off the bat, though, Tommy squaring up with Richie, the American luchador. Uh, so yeah, big things happen over on Pop Culture Punch Out. Guys are earning shots. We're having a whole debate about who is the MVP of Pop Culture Punch Out, and it was all going down through the comments. We got a separate little community on Pop Culture Punch Out, and uh, you guys should get involved. Oh my God, Richie, the American Luchador, hits a turn can run and fires a Tommy over the top rope, and now he's all fired up just in time to deal with me. There I am, another solid draw. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's all this? Oh my God. Huge arm drag with a whole lot of uh, flair to it. Blocks the kick. I'll pick this man up, flip him around a little bit, hold his hand for a bit, and drop a forearm. Coming in next, we got Jubilectron. Jubilectron rapper. They, uh, the game wouldn't let us use the word rapper. Weird. James hits a suplex on Richie the Luchador. It's a good time to remind you, friends, that we are sponsored by 
www.420dna.com. If it's in you, it should be on you. Just like it's on me. I'm rocking my shirt as well. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it's the uh, the two toonies and two dimes t-shirt. So, yeah. And as always, I've got my tasty cup of Holden Rhodes coffee. HoldenRhodesCoffee.com. Check it out. It's delicious. You can just drink it black. Now we got DMP joining the fray. And uh, he and DMP have been working together for a long time, so we'll see if there's any kind of continuity there that the algorithms decide to give us. Or if we're just going to just gonna fight each other. Looks like I'm leaving him alone. Like, I got, I got your back. You want to trade off? Because I kind of wanted a piece of Richie the American Luchador as well. Here comes Ross Bruce. You can see he is feeling it now. Uh, the most fun name to say on the roster, and because he has that name, I'm going to make him pay by hitting him with a guillotine across the top rope. Jubilectron was uh, kind of holding his own there for a little bit against uh, me and the boys veteran and legend, the demented maniacal psychopath. Richie the Luchador got Jubilectron up. DMP's going to help. And they're going to put him out of here. Both of these men going to earn a point for their team. James going to flip over Ross Bruce and fire him out the hard way. Richie the Luchador just shocks DMP, catches him sleeping, and over he goes as Holden Rhodes joins the fray. Richie the Luchador, no friend to Holden Rhodes, former members of Crime Kingdom, and I bet there's still uh, still some bad blood there. But Richie's uh, biting off a lot here. Let's see if he can chew it. Shout out to our house show viewers. The house shows... Are, uh, are getting bigger, friends. They're getting watched more than ever. And so far, nobody's been spoiling any of the results. So I appreciate that. And also, you don't know that what you're seeing on there is what I'm going to use in the show. I'll do it two, three, four times. You don't know. But, I mean, I appreciate it if you watch the house show and can sit through this without... You know, without me guiding you along the way. <laughs> James blocks Holden Rhodes and then slaps him in the face as Merce Frazier fires Richie the American Luchador over the top rope. Merce in there. He was begging for singles competition. And, uh, you know, he got some. He's in there. Here comes Brooke. There goes Brooke with the tilt-a-whirl stunner as Mers picks up Holden and drops him on his back. Holden reverses. Hits a chop. And Brooke is, uh... Well, Brooke's, Brooke's doing some damage. Here comes Spitz. James hits a uh, sit-out powerbomb as Fitz enters the fray here. Fitz kind of a sleeper. Like, he's not a name you hear all the time, but then all of a sudden you're in the surrender your soul and you're out of here. James hits a vicious... I don't even know what the hell that was on Brooke. Some kind of a knee smash. Nurse hits a gut wrench suplex on Fitz. Brooke going to stand James up just to get punched in the mouth. Here comes Showtime. One half of the, uh, I believe they were, did they win the belts? Showtime and Brickhouse? I can't remember. There goes Fitz. Merz Frazier puts Fitz over and out of this match. James is stunned and down. Here comes Merz Frazier to pick the bones. Holden needs a side suplex from Showtime. James, wow, big kick. Goes to sweep the leg of Brooke, but misses and then gets blocked. Team Holden Rhodes was bringing up the rear early on in the season, but uh, he's made a massive comeback. He got some huge points. 
through pop culture punch out and is right back in the mix. Now here's Big Elviscera. This is my guy right here. Big Elviscera has been taking care of business. Not on anybody's team, just kind of doing his own thing over with Dr. Volcano. Let me check my notes because I think we're going to see more of this man later on tonight. No, yes, we are. Tonight in our main event, DMP and the Stroop teaming up to take on Dr. Volcano and Elviscera. And I am excited for that. We've got an Only Heels table match. We're going to see Riggs take on Ross Bruce. We've got a new match that we haven't done before at Me and the Boys Wrestling. Uh, two, actually. And I'll, I'll talk about them when we get there. Because we're missing action. Like, Elvisera just threw Merce Frazier out of this match. And Mikey P is now in this match. Wow. Holding, chopping away at Big Vis. Big L Vis. But he's going to get picked up. Slam back down. Brooke staggered. Here comes Brickhouse, the partner of Showtime. We'll see if the algorithms do them any favors. Big Elvisor in a bad spot, leaning up against that rope. You don't want to be there because Mikey P will grab you. Exploder suplex all the way down to the floor. And Big Elvisor, that was my pick. He's out of his match. James got Holdman in a tight spot. James going to take Holdman out of this match. Makes me want to have a sip of this delicious coffee. Holden is incensed on the outside. Did he just slap Elviscera? I think Holden Rhodes just slapped Elviscera clear across the mouth. But I don't know nothing about that. James going to grab Brooke. Smash him down. Look at Showtime and Brickhouse are fighting each other. It really is every man for himself. Brickhouse just took the MPKO as Hunky Tonk Chris enters the match. Pick a man up, throw a man down. Showtime just hit the showstopper on his own partner as I go toe to toe with Mikey P. Oh my god. Showtime hits a nasty looking DDT on Hunky Tonk Chris. James hits a backstabber. It's all action tonight, friends. We're going to talk about some of the card for Eve of Challengers. That's going to be our next free preview happening in December. And uh, we're not going to see too many title matches until then because we're going to hold it off. But we were playing hot potato with the belt. And it was getting crazy. So we got to keep that special. Uh -oh. I think Brooke just got tossed out of this match by Brickhouse. As Gale comes down, he gets all smashed up by Showtime. Me and Chris fighting Hunt. Fight, yeah. Me and Hunky Tonk Chris fighting back to back. Chris going after Pettit. Now we trade dance partners. Here comes Johnny Armani. Too little, too late to help his friend Merv. Oh my god, shooting star press onto Honky Tonk Chris. Who's Armani gonna mix it up with? Are you serious, Johnny Armani comes right after me? Come on, man. Oh, that's it. I hit him with the poison mist. Well, he hit him with the poison mist. I didn't do the poison mist. Chris gonna press Brickhouse as Gale is gonna deal with Showtime. He'll try to. Oh my god. The action is everywhere. Cutscenes galore interfering with eliminations. Here comes G Cell. Well, Mikey P gets tossed. James gonna knock Mikey P out of this match. Johnny Armani. Super kick! Johnny Armani super kicks me out of the ring. And uh, my night is over. Thanks. <laughs> Gale squaring up with Honky Tonk Chris. That's a neat matchup. 
Honky Tonk Chris, of course, representing Team Holden Rhodes now. Holden Rhodes quietly acquiring some uh, some strong pieces and strong assets to that faction. We're going to see how this plays out as we near the end of the season. Eve of Challengers 2 is going to be the end of the season. Look at that. Look at the comments. It's lighting up in the comments. It's probably our friends over at Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Sorry, Extreme Smoky Mountain Wrestling. It's another channel that we've been interacting with a little bit. And, uh, oh, wow. Brickhouse. Just muscles. G-Cell. And he just got in there. Chris hits a spine buster. But yeah, another potential lead we could uh, we could do some business with maybe. Here comes HBJ, one half of the new Generation X. Showtime and Brickhouse have been pretty dominant since they got in there, outlasting some uh, some pretty big names. Wrestling. Johnny Armani goes right after HBJ. Those oh, super kick. Super kicks this man out. Showtime wants to know where his money is. Gale, oh my god, Gale knocks out Brickhouse and then gets too close to the ropes. Johnny Armani, that's three or four eliminations with Johnny Armani just kind of catching guys sleeping and just being in the right place at the right time, earning big points for the New Age Militia. And here comes Brock. Wow, the tides have turned. The tides have really turned here at me and the boys wrestling. Honky Tonk Chris, though, hanging around. He's been in there a while. I want to say he came in in the, in the first 10, I think. Maybe number 10? A long time he's been in there. Oh, business is about to pick up. Here comes Honky Tonk Zippe, former tag team champions, former friends. Until Chris had an issue with Honky Tonk Zippe not tagging into the tag team championship match, they eventually lost. Chris deals with Johnny Romani, the best friends, the former best friends, no stranger to the Jungle Boy. Honky Tonk Chris. <laughs> eating a few shots from the block. Hard shots. The block looking fresh in those kicks. Oh, wow. Put the man up. Put a man down. Here comes Chris Chaos. One half of Chaos and the Wolf. And now uh, Chris Chaos seems like, oh my god, Hunky Kong Zippe just fired the block out of here. Out of this match. Chris Chaos and Aaron DeWolf, I feel like, have been having a bit of tension uh, backstage. We haven't seen a whole lot of them lately. And, uh, yeah, it feels like maybe they're not quite on the same page. Aaron DeWolf has these massive, massive plans of, you know, domination and taking over the, the, the league and federation and maybe starting his own league and federation. We're going to have to keep an eye on this and see how it plays out. But in the meantime, Honky Tonk Chris is going to get punched in the face by Chris Chaos. Oh, Kennedy hit with the showstopper. Honky Tonk Chris, Honky Tonk Zippe, Chris Chaos, Kennedy, and Showtime are about to be joined by T-Money Gang. Okay. The other half of the new D-Generation X. As we get another look at Honky Tonk, Chris, and Zippe squaring off. A lot of tag team representation in this rumble. Somebody here going to walk out with the Me and the Boys Cash in the Bank bag satchel case money. It's a contract, though, good for a title match. Here we go. Let's see who's going to join these fellas. Let's get some bodies in that ring. Let's get the uh, let's get the frame rates to drop. Oh wow! The Stroop going to enter the mix. Who's more violent than the Stroop? 
And like you set somebody up for a move like the Stroop effect, you are like you're intending to break that man's neck. And if you can go out there in a competition of skill, like you just have to pin him for three. You don't have to kill the man. And Stroop out here, super kick, super kick. Stroop out here trying to end careers and end lives. So just a vicious wild man. Kennedy's going to deal with Honky Tonk Zippe. And uh, their paths have crossed, obviously, a lot. Two, uh, two originals, along with Honky Tonk Chris. we got three originals in the ring right now. Three committee members. Here comes Phil Shaw, Mr. Mumble. Runs an excellent podcast. Speaking of podcasts, check out sharetheshock.ca and find out uh, all of the Block's podcasts. See what they're all about. Handy conversations. There's a whole bunch. Go to sharetheshock.ca. Hunky Tonk Chris going to deposit uh, Chris Chaos. Here's the Stroop effect right here. He's got Honky Tonk zipping. Look at this. You are actively trying to murder people. T-Money Gang asking for Shaw, where is my money? As Chris picks up Showtime. Who is, I'm surprised Showtime's still in this match, too. Some of these guys have been in there a really long time. Phil Shaw going to get dragged over to the side. Uh-oh. Chris got a finisher. Phil Shaw. He's likely out of this match. There he goes. Wow. Honky Tonks, Chris, and Zippe. <laughs> Doing some damage in there. The Stroop drops a knee right into Kennedy's head and somehow buddies him and then does a backflip splash. Oh my god. Monkey Tongue Zip there with a suplex on Team Money Gang. Chris gonna uh, oh, reverse power slam. Awful looking. People are getting bloodied. Number 27, Aaron DeWolf, misses his partner by just a couple of minutes, and who knows what could have been. But this man here, high, high hopes. High, high hopes for his career here at me and the boys wrestling. And uh, big chip on his shoulder, that fella. Ooh, T Money Gang reverses, hits him with an elbow. Monkey Jones said they got scooped by the collar, but he taking too long. I'm going to even square up with Honky Tonk Zippe. Oh man, Chris letting him know. Mr. Mustache pulling a 28. That's pretty good. If you are not in this Royal Rumble, chances are you are already a champion. Uh, and maybe that's it. If you're not in it, there is a reason. Here goes Honky Tonk Zippe eliminated by his former friend and tag team partner, Honky Tonk Chris. But yeah, there's no champions in this because there are actually more than 30, 30 real humans on the roster. So, that's fantastic news. Aaron DeWolf in this situation. Whoa, Kennedy was charging in, but Wolf reversed. He's one step ahead there. Where are we at? Who's going to pull number 30 and have a really good chance to win? The coveted, me and the boys, cash, satchel, bag, money, purse, which is good for a contract. Not a title shot. Chris got Mr. Mustache way up in the air. Chris has been in this rumble a long, long time. His power bar is done. Showtime as well. His power bar is done. King Teeley pulls number 29. And that is also incredible. King Teeley. I wonder if he's excited. March is right around the corner. And we're going to get into Marcho Madness. The, uh, the Scott Hall Memorial Tournament. It's going to be crazy. 64 men. They're going to do it all over again. 
And uh, I don't know. We'll find a faster way to deliver it because the editing kind of destroyed my life. <laughs> so maybe we'll just do it live. Let's see. Number 30, Dr. Volcano, almost like he had some sort of say. And when he was coming in, pulls the 30 and enters this ring amongst the likes of King T, Honky Tonk Chris, T Money Gang, Aaron DeWolf, Kennedy, and Mr. Mustache. One of these men gonna walk out of here with the cash, cash in the satchel. <laughs> Really making a case for himself. Dr. Volcano tries to drag her into Wolf. See, he's got that one Dusty Rhodes knee pad because of respect. Whoa, Chris almost put Honky Tonk. No, Honky Tonk Chris almost put T Money Gang out of this match, but he reversed. Dr. Volcano gets slammed on his back by Kennedy. Everywhere. Down to seven. Who's gonna walk out with that case? Could be any of these fellas. Chris is stunned, laid out. Somebody's bloodied. Looks like Aaron DeWolf is bloodied. Kennedy drops a four on right here, the right between the eyes of Dr. Volcano. And this is all just out of control here. Chris still down. Aaron DeWolf elbowing his way out of the situation with King Teeley as Mr. Mustache goes to work on Dr. Volcano. Gut buster. What a nice way to start the episode, friends. A Royal Rumble. Get everybody some screen time. Get everybody, you know, in the mix. And uh, give us a chance to breathe a little bit. You know, we got some dynamite stories going on right now. The Chris and Zippes, the uh, DMP and the Stroop and Cody Harris. Oh, wow. Keely just powers Team Money Gang out. Mr. Mustache and Kennedy going to work together. Try and put Dr. Volcano out of this match. Or they can just get him down to the apron. We'll see if they have any luck. He turns it around. Chris squaring up with Aaron DeWolf. Oh, check out this power. This is ridiculous. Wow. Chris just picking him up right over his head. Dr. Volcano hits the mist on Kennedy. And then the big knee to finish it off. Where is my money? Chris doing some stomping of his own. Mr. Mustache and Teeley getting caught in the, uh, the crossfire there. It's a neat match. Mr. Mustache and King Teeley. Kennedy and Dr. Volcano have done some business over the years. And Aaron DeWolf squaring up with Honky Tonk Chris. That's a neat one. There goes Mr. Mustache. He's out of here. Oh, wow. Aaron DeWolf drop kicks Honky Tonk Chris off the apron. Chris is big mad on the outside. He's incensed. Wow, we're down to four, just like that. Friends, if you're enjoying the action here at Me and the Boys Wrestling, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, tell a friend, leave a comment. You want to be part of the action? Let us know somehow. Leave a comment. Join our Facebook group, Me and the Boys Wrestling. You can also join the Only Heels Facebook group, Only Heels Incorrectly Named Wrestlers, where we just kind of post memes and uh, we get silly about wrestling. And, uh, we don't take it seriously or, or care too much. It's, uh, it's like a little vacation from all the dirt sheets and the nonsense. And it's fun. A lot of out-of-context things. We'll see you later. An example, a post of the week. So you can do those things. It all supports. It's all help. Dr. Volcano reverses the Kendra days. Pops around a little bit, proud of himself. And why not? We're into five star territory, friends. Come on, Dr. Volcano. Man's just standing there. What are you doing? Got Kennedy up, but uh, 
can only get him down to the apron. Kennedy with the big knee punch. Okay, we got the cut scene down to three. Kennedy, King Teeley, Dr. Volcano. Oh, wow. Dr. Volcano misses wild with the, uh, the parts on Moon Hammer. Teeley slams Kennedy, but Dr. Volcano hits the poison mist when Teeley looks his way. Wow. We're going to see Dr. Volcano later on tonight in the main event as Dr. Volcano and El Viscera team up to take on EMP and the Stroop because they have had enough of being interfered with. There goes King Teeley. Dr. Volcano just going to toss him over and Kennedy, the, uh, the last bastion of hope to defend me and the boys wrestling from the likes of Dr. Volcano who's not on a roster. Who hasn't really been in too many official matches, just kind of there to mess things up. The Kennedy, the hero we didn't know that we needed, takes Dr. Volcano out, rescues the me and the boys cash bank satchel money bag purse contract, and uh, wins this Royal Rumble. What an excellent showing! That was a good rumble. We are now officially on the road to Mr. Kennedy. Who competes in the main event of the cannot do it. Of the immortals. Yeah, with an elimination match, your number can be up at any moment. But they've managed to outmaneuver all the exciting, other Exciting, exciting stuff to kick off this episode. And it only gets better. We got so much more action. Actually, they called that's the well, oh, that was the greatest of all time. We shouldn't have started with that, maybe because it's likely only going to get worse. Here we go, friends. A first on Me and the Boys Wrestling. An original match. An Iron Iron Man, Iron Woman, Hell in a Cell match. So, Iron Man rules, but it's Hell in a Cell. We got a 15-minute time limit. Whoever's got the most pinfalls at the end of 15 minutes in the cell is going to be uh, well, they'll have bragging rights <laughs> nothing nothing really on the line here that said who have we got here Zoe Raven the Pink Power Ranger Diavolo Shelly Johnson Sarah Bailey and Luna Vachon and uh, we opted to not give Holden a representative because Danielle Smith is the current champ. So instead, somebody else from the roster, who is unclaimed, by the way. Unclaimed and up for grabs. So yeah, I wanted to see I wanted to see one if it would glitch out on us. Obviously no rules, everybody gets three finishers, and I just want to see a car wreck. I want I like the cell. It feels like in this iteration of the game they really uh, they favor going through the cell and stuff. Like they always go outside. They always get a weapon, they always smash each other into the doors and the walls. And like I would say 50% of the time I see, see them climb up to the top of the cell and fight up there. So it's good. I like it. I like using the cell. What do we got going here? Oh wow. Breaks up the submission. Zoe Raven breaks up a submission well, attempt from ring, Diavolo on Shelly Johnson. And then Zoe, Zoe Raven gets a bat and just whacks Zoe Johnson, or Shelly Johnson. And then goes for a pin. Yeah. Still no pinfalls yet, but uh, I mean, we're only two and a half minutes in. Pink Power Ranger goes into the steps, courtesy of Sarah Bailey. Still taking me uh, a bit with these newcomers here, friends. The ladies division of me and the boys wrestling. Jelly Johnson with an arm ring around Zoe Raven. Luna Vachon comes in to break it up. Looney Tunes, as DMP refers to her affectionately. 
Lena and her Looney Tunes. Zoe Raven one hops to the top rope, but gets caught. Shelly Johnson, oh my god. She charges in, but Zoe Raven goes up and over the top. Diavolo going for that, uh, the disarm her, looks like. Luna Vachon's in a bad spot. Oh my god. Sarah Bailey just whacked Diavolo right across the face with a bat. <laughs> She's out there to murder. Okay, Diavolo no sells it and uh, socks Sarah Bailey right in the stomach. Shelly Johnson is down. Oh, look at this. Who's uh, the other one that's down? Inside out. Joey Raven? No. Sarah Bailey is down. I lost track of who's who. Oh, that was Luna Vachon who was down. Okay. Pink Power Ranger getting whacked into the steps. And into the side of the cage there. Not good. She returns the favor and throws Zoe Raven down. Diavolo is stunned and down. And Shelly Johnson gets clubbed in the back by Sarah Bailey. And then, oh, about to get hit with a bat, but she reverses. Oh my god. She's trying to maim Sarah Bailey. Luna Vachon puts a stop to that. Oh wow, Sarah Bailey hits a stunner on Luna Vachon. Going for a pin. The referee way out of position. The Pink Ranger going to break it up. Yavolo with another arm uh, arm bar. I don't know if uh, she's got a name for that move. We'll let the block help us out with that one. Goes for an arm bar, but it looks like uh, Sarah Bailey managed to get out of it. Now she's going to try and pick the bones of Zoe Raven, but the referee just he can't, he can't get in position. It's not going to be good for a three. Luna Vachon going behind the pink Power Ranger. Drives a shoulder right into the gut. Fires Zoe Raven over the top. Shelly Johnson doing the helicopter spin on the pink ranger. Luna Vachon letting the crowd know. But uh, you don't want to turn your back to Shelly Johnson. That's a dangerous competitor. Still no falls here as we uh, close in on the five minute mark. But all sorts of action. That bat has been used a lot. Whoever brought that bat in, that, that was crazy. I think Power Ranger goes for a kick on Luna, but misses. Sarah Bailey going to take a minute to pander. Representing dangerous goods, just like we taught her. When you have time, you know, you take a minute, let the crowd know. You get thrown over the top rope mercilessly by someone like Luna Vachon, who's more experienced and knows not to turn your back. Zoe Raven stomping Diavolo. Some of these ladies maybe never been in a match like this before. Certainly not here. At me and the boys wrestling. The only place you're going to see this kind of weird action. If you're into digital wrestling, come here every Thursday. And uh, we'll have something for you. Whether it's an episode of Me and the Boys or Pop Culture Punch-Out or some kind of a tournament. We build, you know, we got, we got seasons. We're approaching the end of our season here. Season 5 will end with Eve of Challengers 2. Eve of Challengers, for those of you that don't know, is our WrestleMania. And if you didn't know that, don't feel too bad because we only kind of decided that, you know, within the last couple of weeks. It's like, that's a pay-per-view. That was a good concept. And uh, I remember that we did that and I remember what time of year. And I know that it was right around Christmas. I think it was Boxing Day last year. So let's do that. Eve of Challengers 2. Let's make that our WrestleMania. We'll call that the end of Season 5. And, uh, yeah. Still no falls here. Because we're at... Oh! 
I spoke too soon. Who we got? Shelly Johnson with an arm bar taps out Sarah Bailey to go ahead 1-0. On the other ladies, Luna Vachon going for a pin on the Pink Ranger and she's going to get her. Just like that, we're tied up. Luna and Shelly Johnson. I thought this would be an interesting concept once we hit a point where it only takes one finisher to put the character away. Like the power bar is so beat down that basically any strong move could lead to a pinning situation. And it should lead to chaos. I'm kind of surprised that there's only been the two falls so far, but maybe now that it's got the ball rolling, it'll go. I believe Sarah Bailey's going for a pin, but the referee is paying attention to Diavolo and Shelly Johnson. He's still going to get the pin anyway, even with all that. Sarah Bailey joins the mix with one pin. Shelly Johnson stunned and down. Pink Ranger, Diavolo, and Zoe Raven going to mix it up on the outside of the ring. Well, they were until I said it. Sarah Bailey with a baseball bat. Going to work on anybody who she comes across and right now. Okay, Zoe Raven kicks her. Sarah Bailey got the brass knucks out. She took the brass knucks out of her tights and smacked Zoe Raven with them. Now you got to go for a pin. There you go. Referee going to count it. Wow. Sarah Bailey with the brass knocks punches Zoe Raven right in the face, pins her for three, and takes the lead here at the halfway point of this match. Zoe Raven going to the second rope. Oh wow. Flying her and Kamrana. Zoe Raven goes after Luna Sean now as the Pink Ranger kind of I don't know, she looked confused for a minute. Up to the second rope, but I think she missed. Shelly Johnson trying to take a walk around, but nowhere to go. The reverse Frankensteiner. So we Raven one hops to the top. Wow. A weird lull comes over the entire concept of me and the boys wrestling. Just <laughs> the audio was gone. <laughs> Zoe Raven hits a flying elbow directly to the back of the Pink Power Ranger, but then she gets hit in the head by Diavolo, who looks kind of frustrated. She's got that bat, just got hit with a sling blade. And then a basement drop kick. Shelly Johnson going to go for an arm bar of her own on the Pink Ranger. Pink Ranger's gonna tap, Shelly Johnson gonna tie Sarah Bailey at two. Ring the arm of the Pink Ranger. Oh my God, Zoe Raven got the bat now and she doesn't care who is in the way. She doesn't care who she is. She just clobbered Sarah Bailey and then Diavolo. Luna Vachon again takes the bats away. Looks like Shelly Johnson got a third, a third point somewhere along the way. Now she's got the bat. Going after Zoe Raven. Wow. Out of control action here in this Iron Man Hell in a Cell six way dance. Each of these pins will count for uh, for the ladies, with the exception of Shelly Johnson, who is not currently on a team. Approaching the five minute mark. Five minutes left, Mark. It's going to be a scramble. Everybody, I think, still in this match. It doesn't take too long to get three pinfalls, and some of these ladies have three finishers saved up, so five minutes, you spend them right, still anybody's game. The crowd falls silent and still and frozen. One day they'll make a game that's proper. Oh, they come back to life as Zoe Raven pops Shelly Johnson right in the chin. Diavolo still going after Shelly Johnson. 
Big European uppercut. You don't want to be caught between the, uh, the ring apron and the cage there. That's a bad place to be. But in the ring's not much better. Zoe Raven just swinging the bat like she's Mark McGuire over here. I think Ranger hits a springboard moonsault and misses. And Zoe Raven, oh wow. Luna Vachon almost got pinned again, but she kicked out at the last second. She rolls out of the ring stunned as we're at four minutes left. There goes Sarah Bailey. Zoe Raven follows her out. Down to three left in the ring. The Pink Ranger and Shelly Johnson going to work together on Diavolo. And hit a, uh, I don't know, put the person up, put that person down. It looks like Shelly Johnson is setting something up. It's an arm bar. We'll see if Di Diavolo can, can hold or if this arm bar is going to be too much. Okay, she's going to tap to that arm bar. Shelly Johnson going to go ahead by two here. Starting to pull away, maybe. Oh, let's see what happened to Luna Deshaun with the Pink Ranger. Can he score a pinfall over her and get herself into the mix? Oh my god. Shelly Johnson had a bat, but the Pink Power Ranger just went over the top. Goes for a pin on Shelly Johnson. He's gonna get her just like that. Two pinfalls, the Pink Power Ranger right in this with three minutes to go. Sarah Bailey just smashing people with a bat. Like any shot the Pink Power Ranger had is gone. She's been hit so many times with that bat now. Shelly Johnson gonna hit a Northern Lights suplex. Sarah Bailey has lost it. She doesn't care about the match anymore. She, oh my god, she just threw the bat through the cage. Shelly Johnson got the armbar locked on. Somebody, Luna? Looks like Luna. Luna's going to tap. Shelly Johnson going to go up by three. Sarah Bailey scores a pin. She's on the board. Sarah Bailey hits a stunner. Now she's going to go for a pin. But, it, but Shelly Johnson got Luna in a, uh, a tap out situation first. So that's not going to register. Shelly Johnson now has six. And she's just going to try and pin Luna. Which is amazing strategy. Shelly Johnson at seven. And this match is over. Friends with two minutes left. It's out of reach. Shelly Johnson putting on a clinic out there. And how to work an Iron Man match. Wow. Super impressed. Pink Ranger letting him know. Okay, Diavolo got an arm bar locked on Zoe Raven. See what happens. Zoe Raven, of course, taps out to the arm bar. Diavolo on the board late. Pink Ranger hits a splash on Zoe Raven. As Shelly Johnson hits a DDT on Diavolo. Zoe Raven goes to work on Luna Vachon. Wow. Oh, Diavolo. Nice looking suplex. Going for a pin. Oh, wow. Pink Ranger does a flipping. Thing. Somebody else got pinned. Zoe Raven on the board. Each of these ladies scored a fall. And we're down to our last minute. But. Oh, wow. Diavolo. Diavolo with a tap out. A tap out pinfall on Shelly Johnson. Or a tap out fall. Wow. Some measure of revenge there near the end. After, I believe, tapping out a couple of times to the armbar of Shelly Johnson, Diavolo taps her out with an armbar of her own. In the meantime, Shelly Johnson just trying to kill time. 35 seconds left in this match. We see some an aerial display from Zoe Raven on top of Luna Vachon. Luna Vachon still with some grit and fortitude left. She's going to kick out. The Pink Power Ranger is now in Shelly Johnson's armbar. Get her. 
with an eighth ball. Joey Raven again does that corkscrew moonsault. Shelly Johnson gonna pick the bones of Luna Vachon. Joey Raven hits an X factor on the Pink Ranger. Opts not to go for a pin. Fires her to the outside. Well, there you have it, friends. Can't argue math. Shelly Johnson gonna win this match WWE scholars in the by four pinfalls that's a uh, that's a decisive time. victory that is an impressive impressive win for an undrafted free agent so these ladies are going to get awarded for their points except for shelly johnson who's not on a team So yeah, let's look at what else is on here. We've still got a tag team match. We've still got another new match. We've got an only here heels title win. match. Friends, we the are in business. Athlete, Shelly, the soldier, Johnson. Truly a hard fought victory at the end of the okay. grueling Iron Man match. The they super athlete, Shelly, the soldier, Johnson. Tomorrow. A win's a win, and it's also all that matters here in WWE. Greatest of all time. So the first match was the greatest of all time. The second match was the greatest of all time. Here we go. This is our version of a gauntlet. This is called a finisher's skirmish. And I believe, unless you watched Pop Culture Punch-Out, that this is the first time you're going to see this match. This is an elimination, four-man tag survivor series style are, only folks. a finisher puts you out of this match no pinfalls just like that brent hits the pump kick that he learned from peter griffin to block out of this match but danger boy dana boyle hits the even flow tover on brent he's out of this match finisher skirmish let's just get a lot of guys in the ring in minimal time. Danger Boy Dana Boyle going to add a little flair to this. If we see the block take a walk to the back. Each team down to three. The New Age Militia taking on Team 420 DNA. And I think this is going to be an effective way to do those gauntlet style matches. So I know DMP had challenged uh, the blocks team. So we'll, we'll have to do that one. We'll do more of these. Maybe we'll... Uh, we're kind of booked for time. We will see a couple more of these though I believe on Eve of Challengers. As well as maybe the next episode and then Pop Culture Punch Out after. But I think maybe before we end our faction war, rather than end it at the end of the season, for the season premiere of season six, maybe we'll do a whole bunch of these skirmishes. Like a round robin skirmish gauntlet match. Ooh. Not bad. That could be fun, though. Good to see some neat matchups you wouldn't normally see. Like, we wouldn't see a one on one between Jube Electron and Danger Boy Dana Boar typically, but in this case, we do. And now we get to see Brooke versus Jube Electron. Who doesn't want to see that? Season 6. Jube Electron's out of here, and just like that, Brooke hits you with that uh, Uranagi, that stylized Uranagi. There's a. Yeah, Package backbreaker. Package suplex. Brooke gonna tag himself out. Gonna tag in Mikey P. Got one of the fastest finishers in the game. Can come really out of nowhere. He hits you with that MPKO. Just like that. You're done. Mr. Mustache out of here. We're down to one. Cody Harris versus Mikey P. Danger Boy Dana Boyle. And Brooke Sugarfoot Kavanaugh. Oh my God. Cody Harris just going to pick up Mikey P and throw him out of the ring. Does the cutthroat to tell him it's done. And uh, then going to stand there. Oh my God. The agility of the champion. Unbelievable. That's why he's the champ, though. That mix of power and athleticism. Look, he's even got the announce team. They're shook. 
The crowd is stunned. Brooke is stunned. Mikey P. Okay. It's not Mikey P's first rodeo. Mikey P using those steps to his advantage. The crowd frozen in fear for the health and well-being of their champion. He's staring his opponent and Mikey down. P gonna get let the crowd know. Zone. Encourage Cody Harris to get back in the ring. Oh, it's three on one, bud. And the tag Brooke back in. Let's see what happens here. Brooke hits a chop and a punch and another punch. Cody Harris blocks. Cody Harris gonna hit a swinging neck breaker on Brooke Sugarfoot Cavanaugh. He runs dynamite restaurants in Toronto, season six, and a, uh, a spaghetti disco that without the name in front of me, I'll never get it correct. But if you search Toronto spaghetti disco, you'll find it. Men's been a chef forever. And uh, yeah, that's his thing. Head chef at a couple of restaurants. It's a tilt of world stunner. And uh, on top of all that cool stuff that he does, he's going to win himself a gauntlet match here. Finisher skirmish. But I feel like that's a nice way to get eight guys involved, see some matchups we wouldn't normally see. See some finishers, obviously. And uh, yeah, it goes quick time. Plus we get these animations. The four-man, the faction situation. Three stars, they say it's very good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Only Heels Facebook group post of the week. This week's post comes to us from the one and only Holden Rhodes with this gem. Tupperware, after you put spaghetti in it, with a picture of the Red Rooster. Unbelievable post. 100% accurate. Bang on true. Speaking of the Only Heels Facebook group, this match is for the Only Heels title, which we use the Up Up Down Down Championship because that's kind of like an internet title as well. And we did that last in the last iteration of the game with the Terabyte title. So Here we go though. Ross Bruce who earned himself a shot by being post of the week. I don't know, a couple weeks ago or whatever, however far behind we are. Maybe it was last week, I can't remember. Oh, hanging off for dear life. Which means Holden Rhodes going to earn himself a shot to get his title back. Oh my goodness. Ross Bruce with that roll through picks the man up, breaks the man's neck. And there's no reason for Riggs to still be alive after that. That's crazy. Oh, right to the kidneys. Nasty Ooh, back he's kick. A state of distress now. Yeah, and this has to decrease his composure moving forward. There's the heel kick. Gonna hit a snap suplex. The only heels he's title on the line here, friends. Please join that Facebook group if you're into having fun with wrestling. Riggs gonna lock up Ross Bruce in a nasty looking submission. And I believe, yeah, this is a tables match, so even if you were to tap out, it wouldn't matter. Riggs hits a big headbutt. Ross Bruce going for a kick to the gut. Looks like Riggs reverses. Ross Bruce reverses the reversal with a step up in Seguri, and then he goes outside to grab himself a table. Eye on the prize. I think get the table in there as soon as possible. You don't know what could happen. Your guy could glitch out. Whatever's playing here can't be good. Rig smacks the man, picks him up, guillotines him off that top rope. And then he doesn't like the table that Ross Bruce bought in, so he's going to bring in his own table. Oh smash this man. The only heels title feels like the exception to the rule of uh, too many title matches. We, the only heels title can be like the TV title. There we'll uh, we'll do that one every week just because that'll inspire people to post more because they'll want to be the post of the week. And then when they're like, what is this me and the boys thing? I'll be like, hey, do you want to be a character on this show? And they'll be like, sure, that'd be all right. Till I lose, and then I'll be big mad. He gets back into the ring. 
But, uh, but yeah, it's fun and it kind of fuels itself a little bit, which has kind of been a neat, a neat thing that's happened. Uh oh, Riggs got this man up, smashes him through the table, and just like that, that's how fast and how quickly it can end here. That match deserves another look, folks. There you see, we're getting a comment without having a viewer, so it was one of those bots. Sometimes bots comment. And that table just disintegrated. The Barbarian. They'll be picking Riggs the Barbarian. Definitely a cause for celebration. Got that Phantom of the Opera kind of half mask victory. thing with the, the nice top hat. Kind of creepy looking. They call that lackluster, but I don't know. It was just short. That doesn't mean it's lackluster. Here we go. We got a four-way tornado tag match. We're going to get a look at the Jungle Boys. Gale and Itami. Mr. Miyagi and Holden Rhodes. And the new Degeneration X. Multiple teams facing Just off for some tag team tag continuity. And an elimination situation. So a good chance to pick up some points here. Especially for the Brock's team. Oh my god. Somebody's out of here. Johnny Armani's out of here already. Holden took out Johnny Armani. Mr. Miyagi took out Murs. Oh my god. Holden and Mr. Miyagi, of course, have earned themselves a title shot. And they're going to get that title shot on Eve of Challengers 2. They're going to take on Crooked Control for those belts. Team Money Gang hits that super kick with the fall into the pin. But he's not going to get him. Mr. Miyagi going for a pin over there, but the referee doesn't care. He's going to knock Gale out of this match. That's early. Oh, my God. We're down to five. Three teams. Two complete teams in Miyagi and Holden in the new Degeneration X. And then just Tommy on his lonesome. Holden Rhodes is going to pin T Money Gang while Heartbreak Jizzle turned his back to the situation. And I wonder if that has anything to do with that situation a couple months back where T Money Gang did the exact same thing to him. I wonder if there's uh, more to this. Miyagi goes for a pin on Itami, but it's not to be. Both men doing some kicking. And they, uh, they kind of fight similar. You gotta believe Holden and the whole team. Like Miyagi's gotta be coaching them up. Oh my god. Miyagi with the standing shooting star press as Holden goes for a pin. Looking again and Miyagi with that monkey flip. Oh my god. Miyagi and Holden Rhodes kind of did a divide and conquer here. They're really in a good spot. Oh my god. Heartbreak Jizzle hits the super kick. Super kick! It's not going to be enough to put Holden away as Mr. Miyagi again goes for that monkey flip. Heartbreak Jizzle went for that super kick again, but you go to the well too many times. Holden Rhodes is going to sniff that out and he counters it. Now in a suplex situation into a power slam. The Tommy going up to the top rope probably for the wet noodle, but Mr. Miyagi is going to roll away. Oh my god, well, Tommy's punching at everybody. Holden blocks, but gets popped from the other side. Nobody can get a move off here because everybody's punching everybody. The referee doesn't know what to do. Mr. Miyagi's stunned on the outside, which is understandable because he's a 78 year old man. Oh my god. Holden is going berserk, and so is a Tommy. These guys are just trying to go. Destroy one another here. Miyagi one hops over. Grabs a Tommy. Holden goes for a pin on HBJ, but it's not to be. Holden and Miyagi have been absolutely dominant this entire match. From the opening bell. Okay, that's it. That's it for Heartbreak Jizzle. He is out of here. We're down to a two-on-one situation with... Holden and Mr. Miyagi taking on a Tommy. Miyagi going for a pin. Holden Rhodes is going to break up the pin. 
And then Mutami gonna kick out. Holden Rhodes gonna stand there with his hands behind his back and watch as Miyagi does the dirty work. And you know, when you're the team captain, that's your prerogative. Miyagi going for a pin. Holden, Holden allowed him to go for a pin. And they're going to get it just like that. Team Holden Rhodes picks up the win. That match is worth another look. Here we go. Big, big win. Amping up. We're only a few weeks out from the free purview. That's a massive win. That's a huge uh, momentum boost. You're going to feel good going into that match against Crooked Control. Just like that. They look like they've been a team for years. They look like they're, you know, the best of friends. Shoot dice in the alley on a Friday, you know. Uh, drive around in fancy cars. You know, eat a veal parmesan. And that's what life's about, you know. Here we go, friends. We are at our main event for the evening. The Stroop and DMP going to take on El Viscera and Dr. Volcano in an Extreme Rules tag. And I want to talk this about a, a couple of the matches right coming up at Eve of Challengers no no and next week. At Eve of Challengers, we're going to see a number one contenders match. Ooh, wow. Get an out of control start. We're going to see DMP take on the Stroop. DMP just gets hit with the Poison Mist immediately while the referee was counting. Now the referee's going to have to count again, but he's not doing things. Oh my god, DMP almost out. The Stroop again going for the Stroop effect. Look at the strength it would take, and Elvisera's neck is broken. Dr. Volcano hits the mist in the knee again. The Stroop going for a pin. Pins Elviscera. Dr. Volcano now going for a pin, but the Stroop isn't doing anything about it. Dr. Volcano going to get... <laughs> going to pin DMP, and we're down to Dr. V versus the Stroop. Now, Dr. Volcano keeps sticking his nose in the business of the Hellfire Club, and DMP is big mad. And we also need to see... Who's the better man between DMP and the Stroop as Dr. Volcano goes to work? So, at Eve of Challengers, we're going to kick it off with DMP versus the Stroop, the winner of that match, going to fight in the main event of Eve of Challengers, Cody Harris, for the Me and the Boys Championship. We're going to see the rubber match between Mr. Mustache and Gale. Just a regular match. Nothing special. Just a uh, thing. I have to. I better not. I better not sell that. I have to check my notes in case it's first blood or something. Dr. Volcano hangs the Stroop out to dry. We're gonna see a 12k title match between Honky Tonk Zippe and Danger Boy Dana Boyle. The tag title match we talked about earlier: Holden and Mr. Miyagi versus Crooked Control. We're going to see a mixed tag title match. Finally, Dr. Volcano and Mad Moxie are going to take on DeBlock and Diavolo. We're going to see a Quarantine League Ladies of Wrestling title match between Danielle Smith and somebody who we're going to determine next week. See, I almost gave it away. Dr. V hits the Poison Mist and the big knee on the Stroop. That is going to do it. Dr. Volcano and El Visser are going to pick up a win over DMP in the Stroop. Uh, we're going to see a massive Only Heels title match eliminator. We're going to see the QLW title on the line. We're going to determine that next week as well. We're going to see... Two great superstars that go great uh, together. And the, that win the, the inaugural crowning of the Pop Culture Punch Out Championship in an elimination chamber match between Ivan Drago, Peter Griffin, the Black Power Ranger, Ronald McDonald, Beetlejuice, and Elviscera. And uh, yeah, it's going to be insane. Eve of Challengers is going to be insane. It is coming up in a couple of weeks from now. I am going to close this come back to me so that i can tell you friends thank you so much for watching with me here this week 
We will be back next week. The Block will be rejoining me, and we will get up to all of our old shenanigans. Check out ShareTheShock.ca. Check out some other videos on my channel. Check out a playlist, some poetry, some music, some of the other video games I play. There's some VR stuff now. It's been pretty fun. Check out www.420dna.com if it's in you. It should be on you just like it's on me right here. And right here. Two toonies and two dimes. I don't know how to make the light work, but you can see it. Also, check out HoldingTheRoadsCoffee.com. It's a fantastic coffee. Try the candy cane flavor. I'm out of breath from all these plugs. We will see you next time, friends. I love you. Bye.